Let's go, Balmark. We're going on an adventure. What's up, people? Sam here. As you probably know, I have a thing for engineless propulsion systems, such as the Orion Drive or the Pod Racer. And today, another one joins their ranks the Docking Station Propulsion System, or Sprizzy for short. Yeah, you know what? I'll call it the Redock Drive for now, but uh, you can leave suggestions in the comment. The whole system costs less than 1000 resources, requires no engine power whatsoever and propels ships of any size or weight to an almost constant 100 meters per second. It works in air, underwater, space and, thanks to messing around with the collision a bit, also on the ground. So, uh, Thresher more in the future? Maybe? Question mark? Probably yes. It provides instant acceleration, it can move forward and backward, it has full pitch roll and yaw control, and it is completely campaign viable. Provided, obviously, you are willing to sacrifice your honor and integrity to the god of chaos. Now, I'm sure you want me to slap this thing on a huge ship, and I will. But before we do that, you have to be patient and sit through the explanation, okay? I gotta get that view time up after all. And here's how it functions. You basically have two craft. Um, this guy here is the flagship slash mothership. Uh, that, that is the, what I will call the header piece. And trailing behind it is the tail piece. Uh, the header piece is the flagship, like I said, but the tail piece is the one with all the control blocks. Now, uh, I, I activated uh, the docking station animation, and also this is 0.1 speed, slowed down by, by 10 times, and you can see that it's still moving extremely quick. It has to do that because otherwise the wobble that comes from docking station just gets out of hand and the, the whole thing is uncontrollable. So how does this work? I have uh, these ACBs here and you can see that uh, basically there's eight ACBs but uh, they, they, uh, they, they do the... but each... <coughs> there are eight ACBs but each block of four do the same actions. It's just that I, I cannot set the timer below 0.1 but I wanted it to go through two cycles every 0.1 seconds. So that's why the timer has to be set this low. You can see uh, that it goes through four steps. It will first of all release all, assi all assigned vehicles and at the same time dock with the mothership. That means that the mothership now pulls us, pulls the, 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 the tail piece towards itself. Then in the next step we undock the mothership from the mothership and then ourselves uh, uh, we will uh, recall all assigned vehicles. That means that we now are free, we dock the mothership to us and push the mothership away. Because our docking station right here is set to 30 meters, while the docking station on the mothership is set to uh, some 20 meters. Um, but because we ourselves are still going at 100 or almost 100 uh, meters per second, uh, we still push uh, the target the header piece away from us at 100 meters per second. And then after that we switch back over to uh, to the mothership, that means that uh, now the docking station on the mothership is turned on and pulls us again. So there's this push and pull uh, exchange. Because docking station can move their uh, docked uh, drones at maximum 100 meters per second, that is why uh, the, the craft is kept at the solid 100 meters per second minus a tiny bit of loss from drag. Now because docked craft are immu immune to drag and also collisions, we can go underwater without problem. It still has almost, it uh, loses a little bit of drag, but it has almost the same top speed underwater as above water. It can go to space because it's not affected by gravity or whatever. The docking stations also don't, don't care about mass. As a matter of fact, I put a lot of mass on my craft here just for the, uh, the sake of stability, but you can uh, put any size chips on there as you want. Really, this is a completely broken and overpowered system. As a matter of fact, if you go too deep, you can actually uh, warp yourself through the ground. 
I also wish to thank Mr. Nucleizer who helped me out with Redboard and the AI. He also immediately went ahead and one up me by building this thing, which uh, basically just uh, provides full 6 axis control to the craft and is also just generally a, a lot smarter than mine. But the breadboard looks like this, and yeah, that's the reason why mine doesn't do that. <laughs> yes! Fuck yes! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, Balmark, we're going on an adventure! And while we watch the Bulwark dogfighting some fighter jets, which is not a sentence I expected to say anytime soon, but here it is. <laughs> let's let's talk about the channel a bit once I calm down a bit. Like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? <sighs> This is fucking ridiculous, man. I fucking love it. <clears throat> Good thing my channel isn't monetized yet, so I can swear as much as I want. <laughs> okay, now that I more or less regained my composure, uh, a few more little things to say. Uh, Ilias, the guy who made the CIC slash periscope combo from the last video. He's really good with Lua and he actually started uploading Lua tutorials to his own channel. Very interesting uh, because, as far as I know, there aren't really any FTB specific Lua resources out there. So, if you are uh, thinking about getting into Lua, that's definitely the place to start. And he uh, builds it in a way that you don't even need to know programming to start with. Lua isn't super easy, but I think that uh, his videos definitely uh, uh, make it a lot easier to, to start learning. So, uh, definitely check it out. Link in the description. The next tournament was delayed to the 11th of July because uh, the su Sunday before that is the 4th of July. So freedom days and uh, all of our American friends will be making barbecue and shooting guns or whatever. Uh, this time's theme is carriers and uh, my plan is to <laughs> do something similar than what we uh, see here and uh, sort of make a poor man's teleport, quote unquote, uh, where a craft will just dock to the mothership. Uh, for a split second every time there is munitions incoming. I'm curious about how that will work out, so uh, join us then. Also, I've been thinking about uh, getting myself a Patreon. Uh, trust me, it's not easy to ask for money. This is like my sixth or seventh take, and I actually had to write everything down because I just couldn't really talk about the topic. Uh, I love your comments on YouTube, on Reddit, on Discord, whatever. I love it that you guys appreciate my work, uh, but also that you uh, think it further, that you improve on it and give me back as much inspiration as I'm giving to you, or at least I, as I hope that I'm giving to you. Um, but still, money would just be a lot appreciated. I don't think I, will, <laughs> well, I most certainly won't be able to finance myself exclusively through YouTube. Um, but I would appreciate any gesture of support a lot. Um, it would mean that I would have to worry a lot less about money and I could... Uh, and if I ever run out of motivation, I uh, could at least buy myself a chocolate or a beer or whatever just to keep me going. Tell me what you guys think about it. Uh, do you want to support me financially? Uh, for example, for like sneak peeks into my current work in, progr work in progress projects. Or other rewards like that. Um, even if you don't want to give me money, uh, you can still support the channel uh, in the usual ways, you know, from the other YouTubers, you know, uh, subscribe, liking, sharing, etc. The traction on the channel kind of collapsed. I don't know exactly why, if it's the quality of the content that went down or if it was just the algorithm, but I'm currently trying to claw my way uh, back up uh, to eventually be able to monetize the channel. So you too can get annoyed by the ads. Huzzah! Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I wish you a great weekend. Bye-bye.